My name is Makita Davis, and it's been two months since I've been released from Bedford Hills Correctional Facility. I grew up in Hollis, Queens. I also lived in New Jersey before my father was murdered. The day I got arrested, well, there was a charge against me and I was made aware of it through my job and I pretty much turned myself in. That was a very, very hard thing to do and, you know, very life-altering experience. My name is Miranda. Um, my mom is Makita Davis, and I'm 21 years old. I was 10 or 11 when my mom went away. Today is Tuesday, November 13th. Um, it's like almost 9 o'clock. Um, we're going to go pick up my mom. This is her release day. We're really excited. My godmom is on her way. I'm going with my grandma, my godmom, and myself. And um, we're just gonna wait for her there. I don't know how long it's gonna take and then we're gonna go to dinner after and then see how she feels after that. Come back home and just wind down and catch her up on everything that she's missed. Well, having a daughter made me understand the challenges of motherhood that I couldn't really understand with my own mom. We pretty much did everything together, almost like growing up as sisters in a sense because I was so young. So this is her when she was like, I think 13. She was like in the eighth grade here or something like that. I guess she was the same age as me when she went away in this picture. <laughs> I saw it the other day and I was like, this looks cool. Let me, just, let me take a picture of it and send it to her. And then this is us the other day, our last visit. Well, turning myself in, I went to Rikers Island, which was the most horrific experience anyone could go through. I mean, the facility is just unimaginably horrific. I stayed on Rikers Island for maybe two weeks before I was bailed out. And after being bailed out, I pretty much fought my case for about two years before I was set, um, I went to trial and was convicted of this, the charges against me. I was at the Boys and Girls Club. I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club every day after school. And usually my mom would pick me up, but this time my dad picked me up. So I was like really excited. And it was like really random, cause like he never picked me up. So I'm like, oh man, it's my birthday and my dad picked me up. So I'm like, where's my mom? Like, what's up? And then she called me and then I was just like, oh. So um, I bought her some jewelry. The bracelet is still under construction. I gotta wait for the, all the other pieces to come. I was thinking of like a sun, a, like a, a sunshine, cause she always calls me like sunshine. I have like an angel wing. And then there's another one that's like a, a heart. And it's like, uh, what does it say? Sometimes it's okay to fall before you fly. And then on the back it says free. So that's really nice. I'm excited. The first day at Bedford Hills, it was oddly better than Rikers Island. 10 months after my sentence, my, I asked for an appeal bail and I was granted an appeal bail. I remember when she came back, it was like around Christmas time and her friend brung her, um, brung her to my grandmother's house at the time. And he was like, I have a Christmas present for you. And I'm like, what? Like, you have a Christmas present for me? And I just hear like heels clacking behind him. And I'm like, oh, that's my mom. So I was really excited about that. I literally just dropped. Like, I, I didn't even take anything that I had in the prison. I literally, like, ran out of the prison, and I was released on bail. And maybe a year later, the indictment against me was dismissed. one trauma after the other. I was at work and my attorney called me and he told me this and I literally passed out. I couldn't believe it. And from there I had to surrender myself back to the courts and go back through the process of Rikers, go back through the process of intake at the facility, 
and, and from there completed the rest of my time. She's pretty excited. She's like anxious, really, really anxious. Like this morning probably feels like 57 hours to her. A whole 48. <laughs> Going to prison really changed the way that I looked at prisoners. Felt like there was so many women there that were women like myself. Women that seemed like they, you know, just made a mistake, not people that I would say are just criminal minded, but people that just made a isolated mistake maybe, and now they're suffering these long, harsh sentences, you know, when there might have been another option for them. We throwing her a party, a big fiesta. It's gonna be so nice. We're gonna be all black affair. waiting for my family to pick me up and it took so long and I'm just like going through this like surreal, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I'm outside and I'm like screaming like, ah! I was crying for three days, and as soon as it's like as soon as I left, the air felt like another kind of air. I felt so free and relaxed. Wow, that was so I didn't expect that, you know, because I'm like ah! all morning, everybody on my unit. I mean, it was so the saddest go home I've ever seen in my life. Oh, she got me a necklace. Oh, thank you. Oh my God, now I got a diamond for us. Can you put, you put it on me? Yes. I see. Y'all gotta make me cry. Why are they doing it to me? <laughs> I felt safe and I felt happy and I just wanted to like take in life and see new things. Looking forward to building a life. I don't really feel like I've had so much of the best direction, you know, or the best example. So my main focus is trying to live my life the best that I can and leave something behind for my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> she is something else is for my grandchildren, I want to be a voice, you know, someone that someone trusts to come to. Oh, Ma, this is a little nice little pad. It's not, why you said when I get here? I knew you was not gonna, you was gonna like it. I just wanted to bust your chops. So where am I supposed to sleep? Next to grandma? There's a, there's a, we have a blow up mattress too. I'm looking forward to everything because we did so much things now. So now that, especially that the time is different and like I'm of age, I look forward to like going to the club with her maybe having like our first drink together. Like I'm like excited about those things. So we could read it together now. <laughs> <laughs> Love me. Oh, we live the life. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm in a house. Like my house, like I live here. Wow, and you know what? It's like so different because the apartment that I have is like three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and this is just like this little place, but I think I needed this little tiny place, you know? Like, maybe I have to get used to the big world again. But I feel good. If you deserve punishment, that doesn't mean you deserve abuse. You can go into prison broken and you'll leave even more broken. 
And I think that that's a huge, huge issue that needs some real attention. Now that she is back, I have, you know, my sidekick or my lawyer or, you know, back. And I know that she has my best interests at heart more than any friend or anybody else can offer. Oh, I'm looking at the refrigerator. It's very, it's not very full right now. I gotta go grocery shopping today. What is this, Angel? Apple martini, you got this for me? Yeah, oh, that's so nice. This used to be my favorite. I know. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have some of this. Let me do it, let me do it, let me do it. Oh God, I can't even do this. I wanna kind of be a voice to the community because it's important to have sound leadership and a voice that people want to listen to. And, and I just hope that I can be that voice in some way.